Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain Hand Trap Increase. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about Hand Trap Increase. I'm going to explain about, you know, the increase of Hand Traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! Talk about how it's come about, you know, and list some few key points on what it is that I feel has caused this hand trap increase. Okay, with that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. One, introduction of more one card combos. Two, power creep evolution. Three, hand trap evolution. Four, design philosophy. One, Introduction of more one-card combos. As we are seeing over the years, the introduction of more one-card combos has been increasing steadily over the years. We see it from 2020 onwards. Our increase of cards that just do a lot of things of more one-card combos is increasing. Right? We have more cards that just do more on summon. The T-Elements is the best example of this i think two elements epitomizes one card combos to their absolute insanity right facts is considered now to be the most broken deck of all time the strongest deck of all time it is simply does too much when you have every single card having the exact same effect you have obviously Tempai coming out in Legacy of Destruction, which is the next set, and that is looking again to be quite strong, but it has some balancing factors there. <laughs> Go back to the point that I'm trying to reiterate here, is that one card combos is something that has been really increased since 2020. We've had it for the last four years. It is starting to become really, really powerful. And as a result, we're seeing more hand traps being included into the deck. Negative card relationships. As hand traps, as the hand trap usage has gone up significantly. I think I was talking about this in the historic set with circuit break, with spirals, with the introduction of the spiral link. And that introduced um, more hand traps into our game. Because you have to consider this. When the Spiral Link came out, we were only playing three hand traps in the game. Does not sound too bad. Yeah, we weren't playing a lot of hand traps. Yu-Gi-Oh! wasn't hand trap focused, right? It really wasn't. Um, during that point, sure we had, uh, sure we had hand traps, but it, the game, competitively, play style wise, was not hand trap focused. But then. Spirals came along with the Spiral Link came along and everything changed, right? Everything changed. Introduced, uh, it introduced a whole new level of toxicity into the competitive scene, but into the game itself. How we players adapted and what Konami released at this time really cemented power creep and everything negative that we know of Yu-Gi-Oh today. And I feel like part of the the really sped up process of the game with a lot of the toxicity started within this period, especially when it comes to hand traps, right? The fact that we were playing now in that scene, 12 hand traps. Are you serious? I wanted to just conceptualize that for a moment. We went from three, playing three hand traps to 12. One moment, I need to look up this nonsense. More than double the hand traps we were playing. And after that format, did we see a reduction in hand traps? No, we saw an increase of 15 hand traps. What the hell does that even mean? Right, 15. Just break that down for a moment. That is absolutely insane. I can't deny that. It's just the truth at this point. So definitely, right? There's a legitimate worry that I have, especially with Tempai that's coming out in Legacy Destruction. But are we, especially when we see in the OCG, that that deck currently is playing 22 hand traps? Is that fair? Remember, 
back in back in 2017 we had spirits playing 12 hand traps and even though at the time it was the only archetype playing this amount of hand traps that was a trend that changed the entire landscape of Yu-Gi-Oh and then every deck was playing uh, 12 uh, hand traps and then there is us over time it increased and then one the exception of one competitive deck became the norm for every competitive deck and became the norm for the game as a whole and right now are we going to come are we going to go under this familiar trend where tempai has 22 hand traps right i've got a lot of worries for the rest of the meta everyone else is going to follow it and then do 22 hand traps and then over time we'll have an increase of possibly 23 25 and then going 27 in the next four, few years four years who knows anyways that's all i've got to say about this point but yeah let's go over to the next point two power creep evolution indeed with Yu-Gi-Oh, power creep has changed over the years. When we first, when the game first started in the early days, power creep during the 2000 era was about the enhancement of monster effects, whereas they were now active effects from inactive effects. And then that increased over time to then power creep now including effects that just said no, that you can't play. You can't do this. You can't do that. That was the power creep of the time. And then it evolved to then saying, let's slow things, these things down with a card like Max C so that we could try and just solve the issue of cards are getting too powerful. But that didn't work. And so then what then happened is the power creep then went even further beyond, even more ridiculous. Why well, you gotta be so complicated? And indeed, since 2020, what Konami's power creep division has been doing is just been giving us advantage engines. Now, what is an advantage engine? An advantage engine is what I like to call an engine of cards in that are produced by Konami that give the archetype or playstyle a huge amount of advantage where hand traps or any other thing that you throw at this archetype or engine doesn't work. For example, we, we see this with the adventure package. The adventure package is the best example that I can um, say of an adventure of an advantage engine in motion. This is an engine that on its own gives you just a free negate. And then after you have a free negate, you can then build your board and play the archetype that you were meant to play. For example, put, when OCG used it for Branded. Branded, did they have a negation? Absolutely not. It was a fair and balanced deck. But why was it hit so hard in the OCG? Because they used what I like to call the advantage engine that is adventure. They did the adventure play first, and since the adventure package uh, was an advantage engine that gave you a negate and did not do anything to hinder the Branded play style, they then, after doing the adventure package, then proceeded to then do branded combos. And now when you do a branded combo on top of an advantage engine there, which means their plays were then insulated. This then um, showcased a whole new way to play the game, especially for um, OCG and for TCG involved as well. You expect me to believe that? This showcased a whole new dynamic of Yu-Gi-Oh that we had never seen before and was unprecedented. Advantage Engines gave us players, but and basically was something Konami did to have a form of power creep, right? And we're seeing this power creep going to its logical conclusion as we're increasing the Advantage Engines more and more and they're doing much more heinous things. First of all, we had the adventure. We had the advantage engine. Just starting off by saying, by having just a negate. Over time, it went to um, then more future support with adventure. Said that now it could do a negate, and you could bounce a card. And then an adv another advantage engine could say, like you can just increase your uh, board setup and do things like that. And over time, we see these advantage engines were getting smaller and smaller, more compact, more precise, and they were just getting 
better and better and better over time. In a span of what, four years? Our advantage engines are absolutely ridiculous and so we come now to 2024 and we see the advantage engine of Snake Eyes and we're just like, holy moly, what is going on here? It's an absolute mess, right? You are absolutely right. And yeah, so that's the power creep evolution that we've had over the years. And so it's something we definitely need to talk about. I think it's something definitely that we are we hitting the logical conclusion to this? I believe we are. I think sooner another, rather than later, we will circle back. I think we can't continue. I think Power Creep can't continue on its current venture. I think the Advantage Engine um, philosophy will end at some point and then something else will take its place. Now, what will take its place then? I'm not so sure, but... The one good thing about Power Creep is that with Konami's sides anyway, they never repeat the same Power Creep that they've done before. So we are not going to get negation as a thing coming back or anything coming back. And hopefully after we pass through this ridiculous and nonsensical Power Creep, we'll go to a more healthier Power Creep. We hope so anyway. Three, Hand Trap Evolution. Now, here's where things have changed as well. When we first started having hand traps, they were just really basic and simple. They were just Karibo, which just stopped stopped you taking damage. Over time, they became a hand trap that could just move a card from the graveyard. And then all of a sudden, they could punish you now with Max C for special summoning a lot of monsters. You have Ash Blossom, which could then stop, which did three things, stopping you from adding a card from the, you could choose up to three effects. One, stopping a card from being added from the deck to the hand. Two, stop a card from being sent from deck to graveyard. Or three, stop a special summon from the deck. When nothing ruins the game plan. And we are seeing that Ash Blossom has been the perfect uh, balance and the perfect stopgap for Hand Trap Evolution. What has happened when Konami has tried to increase what Hand Traps do over this time period has seen their adoption rate just plummet to zero. Facts. For example, we have I think the only hand trap that has seen that has seen sort of consistent sort of play has been Nibiru. But even Nibiru in my eyes I feel has in the competitive scene. Um has it's it's starting to be power crept right now. But it's that's taken like a long time to power creep obviously, in terms of the competitive scene and meta staples. For the rogue, Nibiru is absolutely insane and keeps every rogue deck in check. But the point that I'm trying to say here is, is that what is being noticed is that the more a hand trap does, especially a generic one, that doesn't mean that it's better. I don't like where this is going. What has happened is that a hand trap that has a lot of text and is part of an archetype is absolutely broken. And we see this with tier elements. Tier elements halfness is the best example of this. However, uh, one theory that would have worked in a generic hand trap's favor, you would think, would be Heavenly Sophia Miradora. Now, Heavenly Sophia Miradora, right, has a lot of text and by all states and accounts should be a hand trap that should be bonkers, right? You cannot stop its activation condition. Um, it can negate a monster effect. It, it does so much. Yet, why is this hand trap not played? If hand trap evolution was to reach its logical step, then these hand traps, generic hand traps anyway, that do a lot should be played more often. Yet we find that the hand traps that are played, that we play, consistently need, need to have need to have a baseline and need to be sort of like ash blossom they need to do th- they need to have effects that are targeted effects that matter and effects that overall are used majority overall effects that are used in the majority of the game they don't need to be effects that are bloated with a lot of text or with a lot of words and things while Heavenly Sophia Miradora in the hand trap evolution phase looks to be a step in the right direction, we've seen it fail. And so the hand trap evolution 
are sort of with Konami, they've hit a brick wall. I think they do not know what to do when it comes to evolving hand traps because the more effects they put on hand traps, it seems to, it seems to be it's not working. For example, when you have Kurikar Divine Carnet, now Kurikar Divine Carnet, in theory, right, should be like Ash Blossom. It is a fire hand trap, like Ash Blossom is. It does uh, do like three effects like Ash Blossom does, in, in a way, in a sense. But why is it failing, right? Why is it that this hand trap hasn't been adopted and hasn't been um, used by every single player, by every single archetype? We're starting to see that hand trap evolution is not so easy and it's not so uh, hard. It's quite difficult for Konami to conceptualize or to improve hand traps further. I believe hand traps have reached their logical conclusion and have hit the stopgap. There is no way to improve hand traps anymore, right? They have been improved to their logical end step and you can't do any more with hand traps. And I think what um, Konami will have to realize coming down in the future that it's going to have to be board breakers. And indeed, that's the case. We're seeing more cards, more monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! That, or more cards, rather, that are board breakers. Whether it's uh, Typhon or SP Little Knight that we got last year. In fact, last year, I think, was an experiment to introduce more board breakers into the game. Um, they tr they're trying this with, uh, with uh, Kurikara. But have we had success with this as a board breaker? No, it was meant to be a fusion between Ash and Nibiru, but that didn't work. Okay. Four, design philosophy. Now, here is where I would say there's been a huge change by Konami. I think I've mentioned about this in previous videos, how the design philosophy from Konami has changed. Well, it may not have seems from us that it has changed, but it has changed massively. I mentioned 2020 as a pivotal year, and I'll still mention it again. And I was found lacking wrong that, yes, we did have uh, Baron de Fleur come out in 2021. And yeah, so possibly we do have a generic negate, but overall, the overall trend, I will say, from Konami, from 2020, has been to stop uh, printing generic negates. While some do, we can say, slip the cracks, right? Majority of card design, majority of the philosophy is let's create cards that, that build a huge amount of advantage. Let's create cards that are just absolutely broken out of the wazoo and do not need to negate the opponent but the out but they but they out resource your opponent and i think the reason for this design philosophy is to try and possibly from their end try to as a business in air quotes rather feel like they've um, they've solved the uh or answered the questions or answered the problems that the community have said how can you just get all that for free because the community has said that we want um cars that don't negate so konami's like okay so we've done that so yes we're not printing a lot of cars that negate it's not like we will do anything crazy I'm sure the hellscape I can see arriving in the distance is just your imagination. But they'll just out-resource you instead. Um, the community has said that we want cards that are not generic. Okay, so we're going to create more cards that just break boards. Sound logic, he says, would you get a load of this guy? Like Typhon and uh, a speed light that not negates. There. There is no wrong answer. Every answer is the correct answer. Um, so for every single answer, every single issue that the community has said, Konami has obviously uh, answered it in a monkey paw situation where they have in, in face value answered and really solved that issue, but in the long term haven't really solved the issue, if that makes sense. Facts. They've only just answered it on the surface. 
and I've not really uh, taken the time to actually look into the game, look into the core issues or the core problems of the game and actually solve the problem that we have, the underlying problems, right? And so that's what I talk, what I mean about design philosophy. But still, I feel the design philosophy, even if it is a bit warped um, right now, I think it is a step in the right direction. No! Get it right the first time! Yes, it is not the best design philosophy, but it is, in the long term, better for you, you now. Not even mad, just disappointed. I think it is better that we're not getting every single card that's coming out in sets being a negate effect. It is good that we're, we're actually seeing some thought process in building, in building cards that are not absolutely stupid or out the arse, and there are some generic locks in place. That really hits where it hurts. There are some times where I think there are times when they are wanting to build, obviously, or rebuild law, um, the old school archetypes and just make their law, law support completely broken. Facts. Um, when it comes to gimmick puppets, um, with that field spell, which is absolutely like, we're just like, oh, you need to calm down with that. Like that is a bit too much for support, but okay, I guess. You can't handle this power. And the, we need to find a middle ground here, and I don't know whether we will ever find a middle ground here with Konami. So, there's that. But overall, what I, what I do want to say is that Breaking things is all you're good for! They are in their own um, nonsensical and business-like manner have changed the way they do create cards. Are you serious? And even if it's on, um, as we can say in the business, um, pointless. Because you are trash! It is something. Um, it is nice to see that we do have cards that not, or not majority of them are negate focused in this, in this um, Yu-Gi-Oh landscape. And right now in 2024 or going forward, it looks much easier like to balance the game from a technical standpoint. Balance is made to be broken. Because all we need to do, right, is they need to do anyway, is if you can just ban these, uh, they ban um, Baron de Fleur or they ban all these problematic monsters, right? Because they're not producing as much generic negate garbage onto the field, like the quantity is being reduced to an absolute snail pace, then once these cards are gone, the game will change automatically. Highly unlikely. Because they're not printing as much garbage, of negate garbage, onto the board. But you still take the damage! Right? We're already seeing that with a lot of uh, playstyles we see now. Okay, let's head to the overall conclusion. Conclusion. So, what is my conclusion with all of this? Well, let's see. When it comes to the hand trap increase, I feel this is inevitable. I feel we will have an increase in hand traps. But on the other hand, I feel we won't. And why is my reason why I feel we won't? Um, many players or many of us think that, you know, will will, the, will we have a hand trap increase because of, um, you know, one card combos and whatever, things like that. I think the issue comes about is that hand traps have reached their end point. They cannot evolve anymore. And I think Konami is trying to um, introduce more generic hand traps but they're not being adopted en masse. We're not seeing them in multiple formats. For example, you have Kurikara. Kurikara, from their perspective, should have been a game staple, should have been a staple that we see in every single format. Yet, why is it that we don't see this hand trap in every single deck, right? Like Ash Blossom does. We're seeing that Trying to evolve generic hand traps is just not working, 
right? Ash Blossom seems to be the just the exception to the rule, seems to be the one card that just um just spans across many arc um you know archetypes that are coming out. But evolving hand traps just doesn't work, especially generically anyway. Unless the hand trap though is part of an archetype, then um we tend to see that that archetype not the hand trap the archetype right does extremely well however the hand trap inclusion just doesn't work so what does this mean for hand traps going forward i do feel that in my eyes the tempai archetype will have all those hand traps and that'll be it and i think will we have an increase in hand traps i think we're going to st- i think i think we will have a slight nudge in increasing hand traps maybe we'll go to we're now at 50 maybe we'll go to 18 hand traps possibly i don't think we're going to go to ridiculous levels to 20 24 27 but we may see a slight increase maybe to if we're now playing 15 maybe we'll go to 18 there there might be some um implementation of this and i think we are going to see more increase of hand traps for rogue decks in particular because rogue decks i think are going to i think there's going to be a general shift in how rogue is played now and i think we're already seeing it now with um tempai tempai if you look at the tempai's play style it's very very it's a rogue deck with its play style the play style is absolute garbage yet why is this deck performing so well in ocg because it's stuffed itself with so many hand traps and i think this is going to be an eye opener for all rogue players out there i think role i think tempai is the saving grace for rogue players in tcg i think we're going to see more inclusion for rogue decks or rogue players in Yu-Gi-Oh. Just imp- just putting in just more hand traps. They'll put in the, a lot of Ash Blossom, a lot of DDD Crow, a lot of a lot of just cheap um, hand traps that are affordable. Just put them in, slap it in your deck. After all, the argument is going to be for them. After all, if Tempai can do it, and they're just a battle-focused archetype, which is absolute garbage, then my archetype, which does more than tempai damn I'm, I'm gonna put it in as well like screw it i mean what what am i what is there to lose and i think that's what we're gonna see we're gonna see the rogue strategy have more hand traps than ever before this is going to be an evolution for um the rogue strategy in you you're just having more hand traps so definitely look out for that look out, out for your general rogue just having more hand traps than normal I think as well the floodgate situation is going to increase even more. I think I think floodgates are part of a symptom, part of an uh, ailing sickness that the game has, that there's just no way to deal with combo right now. Combo does too much. When you have every sing- when you have the issue with combo right now is that combo is no longer a negate package it's an advantage package it just generates so much advantage right that it's hit to the point where you have to put floodgates to stop combo from ever just getting out of control because players feel that combo is out of control and there's no mechanism in the game that keeps combo in check and the only last bastions we have right now are floodgates well floodgates aren't fun to play or fun to play against but how do we control combo right now because combo is completely out of control and i think that's all i've got to say about this matter we come to the end of this video so as i like to say you were one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.